Hey everybody, how's it going? Today, let's take a detailed look at the 2015 Chevrolet Silverado 2500 HD Duramax. And this is going to be a detailed, in-depth review of the 2500. We'll start it up, show the engine, and get an exhaust clipping of the performance data, as well as show you a bunch of the unique aspects of the interior, as well as exterior. And before we begin, I'd like to thank Flo Chevrolet, located in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, for allowing me to come out and film the 2015 Chevrolet Silverado 2500 HD. And so, without further ado, let's go ahead and start her up, let her run. As you can see, the vehicle does come standard with remote start. The exterior color is known as Summit White, featuring the premium jet black leather interior. Now while the all-new Silverado 1500, the debut for the 2014 model year, has an electric assist rack and pinion power steering unit now, the 2500 still retains a hydraulic assist recirculating ball power steering unit and a new four-spoke leather wrap steering wheel with color accent stitching as you come across the horn ring, as well as gunmetal gray silver accenting across the multifunction controls. The multifunction controls are also covered in a new membrane material giving a little bit more of a soft touch. LTZ models also come standard with a heated steering wheel. Now the Silverado 2500 actually features two different optional 6-speed automatic transmissions, depending on which engine you get. If you opt for the standard 6-liter gasoline engine, you get a 6-speed automatic that I believe is shared with the Silverado 1500. But if you opt for the Duramax diesel, you get a more robust 6-speed Allison 1000 transmission and a traditional column shift with tap shift manual shifting on the column, tow haul mode, as well as auto grade braking. The tow haul mode actually raises the shift points of the vehicle for better performance while towing. Once you put the vehicle in reverse, your backup camera automatically appears with guidance lines to automatically adjust as you turn the wheel. And so, we're going to flip on the automatic projector xenon headlamps, fog lamps, as well as the hazards. While all four windows are automatic down, only the front two windows are automatic up as well. So let's go ahead and check out the exterior, shall we? General Motors has designed their new full-size pickups to cover just about everyone looking to purchase a new truck. While Chevrolet's Silverado is promoted more as the people's work truck, the GMC Sierra is directed towards being more sophisticated and refined, hence their professional-grade slogan. The Silverado has been the brand's bread and butter for many years as one of America's favorite trucks. Last year, the all-new Silverado 1500 brought the mark to the modern age with a more competitive yet classic design with better efficiency, improved build quality, and comfort. For 2015, the Silverado 2500 and 3500 heavy-duty counterparts now join the half-ton, 
bringing along the vast amount of improvements. The new body is familiar, but all new. Rather than completely overhauling the styling, a more conservative strategy was implemented that gives it a very muscular yet brawny appearance. Overall, the model lineup is an evolution rather than revolution and really enhances the model's strong points to take the best seen over the years and add to it to create the best Silverado yet. While the HD chassis and Duramax diesel were just revised for 2011, just about everything else has been revised and reworked to truly distance itself from its predecessor. Starting with the front end, you have new stacked projector headlamps amongst a new Meteor chrome accented grille. The grille itself allows more air to pass through to the engine compartment for better cooling, while the tailgate and roof were designed to help carry air away in a more aerodynamic manner. With the HD's increased ride height, the front bumper is significantly larger than the 1500s and features front and rear parking sensors. Like the 1500, the domed hood is also made of aluminum. The black hood louvers of last year's HD trucks have been axed in favor of a smoother design with prominent badging across the edges. Also gone are the slab sides, in favor of more defined wheel arches and body flares. In the rear, the tailgate receives its own styling touches and even features an integrated spoiler. The rear bumper now has these handy step-up platforms, like the 1500 and handy grips on the side rails for easier hoisting into the bed, a convenient feature that first debuted on the Chevrolet Avalanche. This Silverado LTZ comes standard with a set of forged 20 by 85 inch polished aluminum alloy wheels wrapped in Goodyear Wrangler all-season tires measuring 265-60 at each corner. The wheel wells are also lined in a new felt material to help decrease road noise. The brace consists of 13.98 by 1.57 inch one-piece vented steel discs up front with two piston sliding calipers, and 14.17 and 1.34 inch solid discs in the rear with single piston sliding calipers. This setup has been tested to bring the 2500 to a stop from 60 miles an hour in an expected 134 feet. The brake rotors also resist premature rust and steering shutter under hard braking thanks to a new process called ferritic nitrocarburizing, which hardens the rotor surface. The HD trucks are also built on a fully boxed hydroform steel frame, and overall, the suspension and chassis is of similar design as the last Silverado, but has been heavily revised and beefed up for HD models. Up front, the suspension is independent with forged steel upper connecting arms and cast iron lower control arms. Rather than springs, HDs use torsion bars for easy trim height adjustment. The rear features non-independent solid axle with 3 inch wide asymmetric leaf springs. Unlike the competition, the HD Silverado diesel is offered with a single 3.73 rear axle ratio, while the gasoline engine options can opt for a 4.1 ratio. The cab itself uses more high strength steel and is mounted to the body with a new sheer style body mounts that limit fore and aft movement. Pair that with the new engine compartment braces and you have one of the most stable composed models yet. GM has also fully integrated the cruise control with the engine and transmission. This allows you to easily maintain constant speeds without manually downshifting or having to apply the brakes. It uses a combination of auto grade braking and diesel exhaust braking to reduce brake fade and heat buildup. Exhaust braking works by closing off the exhaust path from the engine, causing the gases to be compressed in both the cylinder and the manifold. While it's being compressed, no fuel is being applied, causing the engine to work backwards, which in turn slows down the vehicle. The negative torque generated is proportional to the back pressure generated. Stability control with trailer sway control is also standard on all HD trucks. Overall, the structure is more solid and sure-footed than before complemented by a slightly wider track and wider wheels with a plethora of suspension changes. One most important change in structural rigidity is the new cab configurations. You naturally have the regular and crew cab options, but the extended cab with the rear hinge doors is no longer offered, in favor of a safer option now known as the double cab. It adds a traditional B-pillar and front hinge doors that are slightly shorter than the crew cab's rear doors. This improves convenience in that you don't have to open the front doors to gain access to the rear. It also improves side impact and rollover protection while making the interior quieter. The doors themselves have been redesigned to mold with the side panels rather than rolling over the top which also helps limit road noise, and they're also triple sealed for better cabin isolation. For the first time, Silverados also have the option of the latest safety gear such as forward collision and lane departure warning systems. Something else that's pretty neat is that if you opt for the crew cab, you're no longer limited to having a standard 5 foot 8 inch bed. Now optional is a 6 and a half foot bed for crew cab trucks. The 6 and a half foot bed is standard on double cab models, while regular cabs can be had with the 6 and a half or an 8 foot long bed. 
Of course, you can still opt for the DRW or dual rear wheel setup. There's also a new mechanism in the tailgate for soft opening. No longer can the tailgate slam open if allowed to fall. As far as capabilities, max payload is a class leading 7,334 pounds, up from the previous 7,222, while max towing capability is also a class leading 19,600 pounds, up from 18,000 pounds. Now, if you're using a fifth wheel setup, you could tow upwards of 23,200 pounds, which is up from the previous 22,500 pounds. While that is slightly higher than the fifth wheel capabilities of a Ford Super Duty, Ram still does it best with a 30,000 pound tow rating on a fifth wheel. You can also opt for integrated LED lights under the bed rails for easier low light working. For better off-road performance, the Z71 package adds beefier hardware such as special shock absorbers, a heavy-duty air cleaner, hill descent control, underbody shields, tow hooks, and special styling cues. Overall length is 239.5 inches with a width of 80.5 inches and a height of 78.2 inches. Total curb weight, depending on how equipped, is around 7,500 pounds. Then we'll go ahead and pop the hood. Silverado 2500 and 3500s feature carryover power plants from the previous generation. Standard offerings include a gas-fed 6-liter V8, while a compressed natural gas variant is also available that features hardened valves and valve seats. The engine produces 360 horsepower and 380 pound-feet of torque in 2500s, and 3500s get a drop in horsepower to 322. While operated at 2500 in CNG form, power also drops to 301 horsepower and 333 pound-feet of torque. Of course, the real workhorse is the proven 6.6-liter Duramax turbo diesel V8. With an iron block and aluminum heads, it consists of pushrod design with four valves per cylinder and a lofty 16 to 1 compression ratio. It also has a red line of 3450 RPM, but increases to 4800 RPM during braking. It produces a healthy 397 horsepower at 3,000 RPM and a whopping 765 pound-feet of torque as low as 1,600 RPM. While good, HD diesel trucks from Ford and Ram do produce more power, even though the Chevy does beat them in select towing capabilities. These numbers translate to respectable 0 to 60 times of 7.2 seconds and quarter mile times of 15.6 seconds at 86.8 miles per hour. GM also electronically limits the top speed of the HD trucks to 98 miles an hour due to their tire setup. While HD trucks aren't required to be evaluated by the EPA, it does feature a 36-gallon fuel tank running on low sulfur diesel fuel and is known for an average miles to a gallon of 15.8 depending on towing and driving characteristics. Probably the biggest set of improvements and refinements has been with the interior. It's more comfortable, spacious, luxurious, and it's quieter than any Silverado before it. The door frames are triple sealed with extra sound insulation and laminated glass for vastly improved cabin isolation. Hydraulic body mounts also help quieten the ride. The materials and build quality are light years off the previous generation with padded materials cover many interior surfaces, including the door panels, highlighted by optional wood trim in certain models. You'll also notice that storage pockets have been placed wherever possible for added convenience. The seats themselves are fully powered with lumbar and are wrapped in perforated leather for LTZ models that work well with the heated and ventilated function of the seats. They feature good comfort and support along with adjustable headrests and seat belts with side airbags. As we continue through the vehicle, you do have model-specific aluminum door entry guards down below, as well as a wide, flat floorboard. The dash also features the padded material that wraps towards the lower portion, kind of gives it a seamless integration of the unique color accent stitching. When you take a closer look at the dash design, you'll see that it reveals that it was originally set up for seamless integration of towing controls, such as the trailer brake controller and four-wheel drive dial, tall haul mode on the shifter, and exhaust brake controller in the center console. Come and see she sounds.
Oh, we didn't shut her up. Nice soft closing doors. Definitely helps with the triple ceiling. Now, you can also opt for a six speaker Bose audio system if you get a Silverado with a bench seat up front. If you opt for the bucket seats like you see here, it also features a seven speaker Bose audio system with subwoofer. Now along with that Bose audio system, this Silverado also features the optional Chevrolet MyLink system, a mobile media navigation telemetrics interface with eight inch touchscreen capabilities. So if we take a closer look at the MyLink system, it's quite simple to use and like I said, was built around hands-free functionality and ease of use with a wide variety of people. So this is your main menu, activated via that home button right there. So if we go ahead and start with our audio screen, right now we're in the media function, activated via this button right here. If you want to go to radio and satellite radio, you click the radio button there. Basically in the media screen, you'll have your iPod, auxiliary integration, USB, SD card input, hands-free Bluetooth streaming of audio, as well as your CD player rook located right down below there. Each screen, including your telephone, navigation, as well as radio, has custom tailored voice commands activated via the little icon on the left hand side. Say an audio command. Help. To tune to a radio station, say the command tune, followed by an AM or FM station number, or an XM channel name or number. You can also choose audio from your media by saying the command play followed by a genre, playlist, artist, album, or song name. Or, to hear more options, you can say radio or my media. Goodbye. So it's a pretty simple system to use overall. The voice is nice and pleasant, and like you saw, it displayed all of the commands on this screen, as well as that screen, so you don't have to take your eyes off the road if you wanted to get a little bit of help using the voice command system. Of course, your album artwork powered by Grace Note and also shows up on your satellite radio. Your rewind and fast forward, pause, as well as track selection if you just tap it quickly. The menu button on the far right turns on the shuffle if you want to shuffle your iPod songs. Equalizer and audio adjustments. As well as automatic volume. Adjusting with the vehicle speed. If you hit browse on the far left, you can see the different songs that you're looking at in the current playlist or song list that you're currently on. Hit that button right there and you have your different options including your voice commands, playlists, artists, albums, songs, genres, basically everything you would see on your iPod for example. And if you have a shuffling, it'll show up at top. So if we go ahead and click radio, it brings us to our XM satellite radio as well as AM FM. If you hit browse while on XM, it brings up the categories that you can also change the view to view the available stations. While on that screen as well, I forgot to mention, like I said, you can also pull up your preset stations for ease of use. Since this is a hard drive navigation system as well, it'll actually record live radio, so if you want to pause it and rewind it a little bit, it'll allow you to if you wanted to listen to a particular part of a song again. Of course, your menu located off to the far right, tune select, you can tag specific artists, songs, so every time something comes on the radio, it automatically lets you know. And not least, of course, while you're in one of these screens and you can't actually see the home menu, there are shortcut keys up here for radio, navigation, and telephone. So, if we go back to our main screen, check out our telephone. This is the main screen that you'll see when you go to your Bluetooth telephone. Again, voice commands, storing contacts, recent calls, keypad for manual dialing, as well as storing voicemails. If you want to connect your Bluetooth phone, simply hit Pair Device, then go to your phone's Bluetooth settings, and look for Chevrolet MyLink. Click on it, it'll ask you to either enter a code or confirm the settings that you see right here. Then pair it, clicking OK on here, as well as on your phone, and there you go. Once the device is paired, it shows up right here, and then you can start using other things like the um, hands-free Bluetooth streaming of audio. Now this particular MyLink system does not feature the optional factory navigation system, otherwise, it's through your OnStar system, so calling OnStar and getting directions, they can beam it to the system here and give you like turn-by-turn -turn guidance and um, other things of that nature. Otherwise, it's just a little compass that shows up. System settings, other customizable options of the vehicle, internet streaming of radio through Pandora if you have your Bluetooth device connected, as well as your OnStar. You can load up custom apps and reconfigure it, like I said, for um, a few different menus. If you click on your outside temperature, it brings up your climate data. And if you click on the time, it brings up a pretty cool analog clock with the date. 
Of course, if you didn't actually want to use the touchscreen itself, the tune knob over here actually doubles as a little rotary wheel to make the appropriate selection. When you want something, just press the menu button for OK. Otherwise, while you're in a particular menu, it's actually a shortcut for this key right here. You do have a back button going between different menus, CD eject, rewind fast forward and track selection if you didn't want to use this one right here. But in a nutshell, those are all the basic features of the MyLink system now available in the newest Chevrolet products. As we continue through the interior, you'll notice that the entire center stack here is completely encased in the accent stitching, as well as some glossy metallic silver trim. Right beneath the MyLink system is your in-dash CD player, as well as your standard dual-zone electronic automatic climate control, with one-touch automatic over here, syncing the temperature on both sides, easy-to-use rotary dials, fan speed in the middle, different zones, AC, recycling through an air filtration system, as well as front and rear defrost. This LTZ also features three-stage heated and ventilated seating for both the driver and passenger. And at the bottom in the unique toggle switches are your power pedal adjust, traction control, your bed lighting, parking sensors, downhill assist, as well as the exhaust brake controller like I touched on earlier. Continuing through the rest of the interior, the large center console houses an immense amount of storage space. On either side, you have storage pockets for both the driver and passenger for maps and things of that nature and a large, deep well with a removable cup holder that can be adjusted either forward or backward. Your connectivity begins up here. Like I said, there's an immense amount of ways to charge your devices, a variety of devices. Two 12-volt power outlets up here, three USB inputs, as well as an AC household outlet. And continuing on back into the padded center console, we have another deep storage well. Another 12-volt power outlet to the left Two more USB inputs, iPod auxiliary integration, as well as an SD card input, and it's also LED lit. As far as your steering wheel, on the left hand side is your cruise control, as well as heated steering wheel activation, and on the right hand side are your hands free telephone and voice commands, and the controls for the driver information system located in the optional 4.2 inch LCD display in the middle of the speedometer cluster. Your radio controls are conveniently located on the back, with your volume portion on the right as well as fast forward, track selection, and go between your preset stations on the left hand side. As far as the driver info system, using the little directional arrows, you can pull up similar systems like you would on the MyLink system, such as system information, trip computer, fuel data, tire pressure, economy, some diesel specific functions, audio phone navigation, as well as settings. Plus, you gotta love the unique gauge cluster, kind of retro futuristic, if you will. Custom tailored for the Z71 package, with kind of like a, a faux aluminum backing, polished rings, as well as your necessary vehicle data on top, including your voltometer, vehicle temperature, fuel, and oil pressure. Alrighty. We'll go ahead and shut her down. Then we'll check out the back seat. And as you'd expect in a full-size pickup, backseat room is plentiful, especially those over six foot. Soft touch material, and the unique styling. And full bench seat for the rear. And if you need a little bit more storage space in this back area, you can just grab the bottom cushion and flip it up and it'll lock in place. Very simple and opens up the floor for a nice clean loading space. Seats are nice and soft, plush. A little bit of storage and an extra 12 volt power outlet for the rear. A 
rear illumination, coat hooks and grip handles. Then we'll check out the rest of the vehicle, shall we? And of course, this seat folds up just like the other side. And it also features the same power adjustments on the passenger seat that you find on the drivers. It also has a two-tier locking glove box with lower storage and modest upper. The latest generation General Motors pickup lineup is the best yet. Through evolution, it stays loyal to its tried and true roots, keeping a traditional layout with that modern technology and convenience people come to expect in this modern day. Well everyone, I hope you enjoyed the in-depth look at the all-new 2015 Chevrolet Silverado 2500. Be sure to stay tuned next time, there's a lot more where that came from. Take care everybody.